On this episode of Gadget, we're coming to you from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center for Interop Las Vegas 2008. We'd like to thank our production sponsors, Interop, the University Catholic Center, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetextout.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. I'm a member of the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order in the Catholic Church. And we're here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here for Interop 08. That's right. It's the geekalicious gathering of IT workers, professionals, and executives from around the world. Now, I'm going to try to bring you a couple of segments to show you behind the scenes what we do here, what the Interop team is all about and some of the cooler gear being brought to the show. Now to help me with this, I've got uh, the help of a colleague, a, a fellow Interop engineer, by the name of Matt Hum from Enterasis. Now, Matt, i got to ask you, we've been seeing these little boxes on our tables for the last couple of weeks. Exactly what are they and uh, what do they do? So, in order to get network connectivity here within the NOC, we need some sort of enterprise level switch so we can actually maintain full gig ethernet with multiple users plus phones and deliver full PoE to every single port. Yeah. So, so these are enterprise level switches that go on your desk? Yes. Okay, so I gotta ask, why would I want that? I mean, why wouldn't I just get uh, a, a Netgear or a Linksys? Because I mean, my experience with enterprise class switches is that they're just damn loud. And I don't want something that's gonna sound like a hurricane when I'm trying to surf the web or, or you know, do my spreadsheet. Well, one of the best parts of our, this switch is we use a lot of our research when developing our industrial switches. So we, our industrial switches have no fans whatsoever. No fans, it's, on the top is a really large heat sink. You can throw water on it. it it's a perfectly fine, it's um, explosion proof actually. Um, we took all that technology that we developed in developing that and put it into these switches. These switches, no, one fan that, w that will only turn on when you reach about four, uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's dynamic. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, because I've noticed that. I mean, one of the cool things about this switch is that I've actually been able to have it on my desk while I was listening to quiet music. I mean, that's that's unheard of. Now, that's not the only reason why you'd want something like this, though, right? I mean, it, it, an enterprise class switch on the desk, what does that give me? A aside from the, the fact that it's got 12 ports of PoE, aside from the fact that it has, you know, enterprise level command line integration, what else can I do that will allow me to sort of leverage? Why, why would I want to use the D2? Well, one special thing about all of our switches is we have something, a little uh, extra bonus on in front of every single port. Uh, we call it policy. What policy is, is like in front of every single port or every single user attached to that port, there is an individual, um, you can imagine it like a, a firewall, a virtual firewall, or ACLs on steroids. We can permit and deny traffic like most firewalls can do. We can also do other things. Once we classify the traffic, and it could be classified on any, any layer between two and four, we can then mark it for some sort of action. That action, again, could be permit or deny, like for example, firewalls. But we can also dynamically change the VLAN tag. We can give it a, a rate limit, so rate limit inbound traffic on just a specific type of traffic. Or even, we can even uh, give it a class of service. We can, we can overwrite whatever traffic you have in there. We can take the VLAN tag and the class of service, overwrite those, strip those off, overwrite them with what we tell it to, to be, and then pass the traffic along. I also noticed that you don't just have, you know, your standard power and your your, your ports uh, uh, on the on the front of the switch, but you add a, a couple of extra sockets here and it looks like you've got several different power uh, uh, inputs. What, what's that all about? <coughs> okay, so because this is a PoE switch, we have two types of uh, power adapters or power sources to plug in. There's a regular uh, DC jack, which will just power the switch. The switch consumes about 30 watts of power. However, we also, if, if you are inclined to do PoE, we have this DIN connector, which is a, get, uh, delivers a full uh, 130 watts of power to the switch. The switch will consume 30, and then you have 100 watts of power to use however you like. If you need uh, the full 12 ports of PoE, you can plug in a second power supply and have, uh, let's see, about 230 watts of power delivering PoE. We also have uh, 
and our two uplink ports at the edge on the on the right side of the switch, uh, those are mini GBIC slots. So you can run fiber directly to this or copper. You know, have an extra copper for your uplinks. Okay, so I mean, if it's enterprise class, I know that it's not going to be. It's not going to be near what you might buy from Fry's Electronics or Best Buy. I mean, this is probably not something that you're going to find on the average Uber Geek's desk. So where would you see this being useful? I mean, where would I want to deploy a D2? And what, what sort of situations and what kind of environments would this make sense? Well, the different ty uh, there are many different situations you can put this. A lot of people are thinking about putting it in conference rooms. Um, you can actually rack mount these. We have a, a frame, so you can put two side to side, rack mount them. If you notice, there are three different uh, sets of LEDs on the front, on the top, and on the back. You can wall mount it so that the, the top lights are shown, and you know, the ports come on the bottom. You can under mount it underneath a desk. You can have it sitting on top of your desk. Is, this is a very flexible switch that you can, you can position almost anywhere where you need multiple ports in uh, a remote location. Especially with PoE. Yes. Uh, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's something I could see as, say, you want to do a, a quick office deployment, like a mobile office. You, you sit this thing down, you've got all your phones, they're all PoE, you, maybe any cameras you might hook up, uh, any uh, additional devices that can take PoE, and you've got sort of that central enterprise class switch that forms the basis for your mobile office. A, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of companies are now moving to shared office space where you have a big one secretary and several different rooms. You know, so uh, one company may just lease two rooms from uh, out of a big office space. You can then deploy this to provide you security as well as uh, full connectivity and PoE to that those two rooms, and you have 12 ports to do it with. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. Uh, thank you for showing us this very cool product, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to give you a more in-depth review on it and, and gadget in the future. But uh, if you want to find out anything else about the show, about the product, or about Interop, you can always go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. And uh, be sure to check out the D2 from Enterasis if you're looking for something enterprise class but yet mobile and uh, not the size and sound of a 747, you may want to check them out. Well, thanks for watching. I've been your host, Father Robert Balasare. This has been Interop at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. Ports here on the back, LEDs all over the place. It's very cool. You can touch it, not a problem. Very, very low heat. They are uh, 12 PoE. Uh, it's fully PoE capable. And um, <laughs> it's a switch. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do cut over so you can do that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a switch. It's a, switch. It's a box. It's, it's I'm not really holding it. It's blinky. I'm not really it's holding one. I'm holding like a he's got the, the cover. cover. We don't have a spare, so <laughs> we don't have a spare, so that's the real one. So sad. No, but we should put something under it. We're gonna we're, no, we're gonna do we're gonna do B roll, so we're gonna cut to the actual box. Oh, I don't like holding the cover. Holding the cover. <laughs>